This is probably what most people think dubstep fans enjoy. And honestly, you know what, it, it's kind of true. But if you actually had an unfortunate encounter with a dubstep fan, you might be surprised to hear that a lot of us have moved past the sentiment. Yeah, although dubstep is traditionally known as... It's changed over time and has become something very different now. So, to show how cool dubstep can be today... Oh my god, that sounds so cringe. I've prepared and completed three production challenges, which involve using characteristic dubstep sounds, as well as certain dubstep production techniques to make some music that is hopefully listenable to the rest of the population who don't suffer from music inflicted tinnitus. Hopefully by the end, I can show you that by taking some creative liberties, any genres, even ones as pet as dubstep, can sound pretty nice. Also, I think I should add that the genres I will be producing today are mostly melodic and not heavily oriented around being your traditional atonal festival bangers. But if you do want to see more of that kind of stuff, then make sure to comment some heavy genres that will satiate thy lust for. I think I should also mention that I made each of these in one hour as part of another challenge, so sorry if they sound bad. Anyways, enough of the ramblings, let's just hear the first. Now, the first thing I immediately thought about was that this can only work with a Neuro sound design approach, though if you can make something else work, I would be glad to see it. If you don't know, Neuro is a style of bass music which focuses on sounding as ass as possible. And before you get mad at me in the comments, I'm not saying that it's a bad music genre. This is what I meant. Doesn't it remind you of another type of sound? Perhaps one closely associated with the rear end of many living organisms? Now, the reason I thought this would work best is because newer sounds tend to be made on the other hand, hand, distortion, distortion, which creates a lot of sound effects using the same thing the sound context of another genre. Okay, so basically, high frequencies go low, mix still remains thick. Starting off, I use some future garage drums since they have some strange correlation with dubstep for some reason, and also because the samples are chill enough for lo-fi. For making these, you basically just want to draw in your basic kick and snare pattern and then add random foley sounds as fills where you think is appropriate. You can use any samples from random sample packs to make these future garage beats. I made this kick by the way, praise me. For the main sounds, I went with a 4-8 time signature pattern and used this as the foundation. Fundamentally, it's just a sine wave compressed and distorted with a pad layer. I made that sounds like this. To emphasize the chord progression and harmony, I layered it with detuned square wave chords with a modulated low pass filter which sounds like this. I think it adds a little movement and texture to the main sound. After that, it was just adding fills where I think was necessary, such as in these holes. For some of them, I used my own sounds from previous sound design sessions and processed them a bit more to fit the track. Others were just presets I had made before and liked enough to keep. Those were mostly just made with sine or triangle waves, distorted with some noise and modulated by filters. And the last step was to add a piano lead melody, as we usually do in lo-fi. To add a better sense of progression in the second half, I layered the piano and added a sustained counter melody with hella reverb to really push it in the back. And with a bit of mixing and mastering, this is what the whole idea sounds like. Okay, I know it's not exactly dubstep anymore at this point, but the fact that I use its sound design is enough for me, so I think it's time to move on to the second. I have to admit, I haven't really touched breakcore as a genre up until I made this, and after spending a total of 10 minutes chopping up omnibreaks breaks for this track, I can fully understand the appeal now. Breakcore is usually characterized by its usage of quick drum beats that specifically helps ease an average 21st century person's severe symptoms of short attention span. 
So to include this, I thought up of a call and response pattern that could accommodate for it with a short chord stab section immediately followed by a longer, more sustained breakbeat part. This was definitely harder to make than the previous one because it was way more intricate and detailed than lo-fi music. I struggled a lot in making the chord stack sound right, making the melody flow in a way that made sense, getting the filler sounds to support the movement of the track, getting the layers to work cohesively, making the drums uncluttered, basically stuff like that which made me want to rip out my butt. I would say overall, the sounds are pretty standard stuff. Simple saw leads, saw sacks, layers, fills, most of which I didn't make myself, and some dubstep drums. Finally, which by the way, I made them myself. So altogether, this abomination sounds like this. I think this sounded a lot more like dubstep this time, but it still didn't turn out as aggressive as I would have liked. Good thing we can listen to the third genre. Okay, before you start commenting, death step? Metal step? I'm sorry to disappoint, but it's more like melodic dubstep and metal. Basically, the idea was to have a pattern like Suisei's template with a halftime back and forth with the chords and the lead that sounds like this. I started with saw chords and a thick neural wreath just to set up the main pattern and lay the foundation. Then I wrote a lead melody and made different leads for each part. Like here, I have a more screechy sound to juxtapose and contrast with the more rounded sound from before. Layered with the wreath, I think it sounds so cool. Then I added some brass as a bass layer, some strings and choir for a more cinematic feel, added this cool modulated filter, and I forgot to add the metal aspect to this. Uh, here, I have some guitar layers. Surely that solves everything, right? How about some reds on every quarter notes like, like they do in metal breakdowns? Oh, what about some distorted metal basses? That's metal enough, right? Okay, so I barely managed to salvage it, and by that, I mean I'm stretching and reaching and coping so hard I made gymnasts and ballerinas look stiff. Basically, I made the entire idea feel like metal. Do you hear the chords accompanied by the bass layer? Sounds like a distorted guitar to me. Uh -huh. Okay, I understand if you don't think this one fits the description, but I think it works and that's all that really matters. So here is what it sounds like. Oh yeah, and by the way, I made the kick and snare. <laughs> I originally made this video because someone wanted to see me explain the lo-fi dubstep idea in more detail, but I ended up deciding to talk about more than just that. So make sure to leave a comment with your thoughts. This was also my first attempt at making a video in this style, so sorry if it's any low quality segments. I'll be working hard to improve for the next video. For my own safety, I won't be giving away these project files. I know that's probably one of the best ways to see for yourself how something is made, but I'm just scared that someone's gonna upload my stuff as their own and copyright my own works using something that I made. I hope you can understand. That said, I still hope you learned something out of this. I know I only really scratched the surface with how in-depth and technical my explanations were, but right now, I'm trying to find a line of being informative while still being concise and entertaining. So please, comment any feedback you have. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.